Morning skiers. I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob. How's it going? Uh, Bob and I showed up to this the mountain this morning and realized that we had a unplanned Stokely Montero day. Yeah. Pretty fun. Um, back when we did, I think the Montero AX review or maybe the AR, we talked about how we'd come out this season and just do kind of an on snow discussion and mini review of them. Um, Bob, you got first run there. I'm a little jealous. Uh, but what'd you think? Uh, I mean, smoothness just dominates the whole conversation. You totally. Know, how quiet and smooth they are is just like Even the like, absolute, you know, peak of skiing technology. It's even crazy. when you like hit them together on the lift, yeah. which like I try not to do because they're so nice and I don't want right. to damage them, like they don't make any noise, which is wild. No, I try to keep mine far apart so they don't touch, they never touch each other. <laughs> to, from my perspective, Bob, when you get on those, it looks like some of your best carves. Does it feel that way? Yeah, that's the ski does most of the work, let's be honest. Like, sure, <laughs> but know, that's kind of the, that's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. And like, they're not light, you know, so you feel right. really planted on the ground. So 100%. you can be like more confident with, with your carving. So yeah. like, that's a big difference between like the other day on Elan Ripstick 88, you know, where that's just lighter. Sure. And yeah. like it does well, but not as confident. Or even like that Core 93. Sure. You know, a little yeah. lighter kind of can get kicked around, especially like for somebody like me. Like in that, in that conversation, we were talking about how when I ski a metal or a ski with metal in it, you don't get those surprising reactions right. out of the ski. And that I think is a, a good story about these skis. Um, Finding choice, what do yeah. you got on there? This is an Armada Strive 16, so Solomon Atomic Armada. Isn't Strive, that an STH? Uh, I'm sorry, STH 16. Okay, my apologies. I'm glad, that's all right, I'm glad <laughs> I still know what bindings are. Um, you know, still kind of a similar heel as that Strive, but the STH toes. That driver know, toe. That driver toe is a lot, a lot more burly. Yep. Um, you know, basically did this instead of the pivots for uh, brake compatibility purposes. Sure, that 85 width is like no man's land for pivots. Yeah, I just and these brakes just tuck in really nicely. So yep. that's just, an, you know, another kind of nod to the confidence. The and great, great I, bindings. Well, I think a, a proven binding for carving performance. Yeah. A lot of people really like that driver toe. Yeah. So thanks for the feedback, Bob. Glad to give it. Um, I'm going to get this next run here and then we'll have another little chat on the chairlift again. Sounds good. Probably going to go the same way. What's up for that guy? Run two, Jeff. Looking pretty sharp out there on those. I feel like I want to redo. You uh, well, you did run into all, every <laughs> single person on the mountain, but still managed to find some nice pockets and windows in there. You could open it up. No, totally. And they're super fun. There were there was like a moment in there where we had some uphill wind, and there were like some people on the trail, and I was getting a little frustrated, like wanting to go faster. But then I remembered that like. They still feel good even when you're not going fast, which yeah. I think is like, I don't know. There's a lot to like about a ski that can handle the high speeds, but then like this last little section of North Slope here, like there's not much pitch there, but it still feels good. It still feels like responsive and rewarding and fun. Right, and I think like for every high-end skier you see on these, you also see someone that just really appreciates the precision and quality, and they're not the most aggressive skier. Well, at that group that we passed, the four, I think there were four skiers, and I yep. think out of that group, there's a lot of like Laser AX skiers. Yeah. I don't think they've all transitioned to Montero, but I would imagine that like that'll be the natural progression, and I was thinking that like they... I know those guys love them. Right. Or like Tad that I play golf with. Like he loves them. Um, and he's, you know, he's 76, 77. Um, not super aggressive, but he, he loves it. And then you can, yeah, you can like, I don't know. I like this ski because I can ski it. I can ski it as hard as I can. And yeah. I, like <laughs> it's skier limitation before ski limitation. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, you have a different binding option. Yeah. That thing looks nice. 
Yeah, so it went with pivot 14. I really wanted either a 15 or an 18, but I had this 14 in a box um, and it's fine. You know, I definitely prefer that 15 or 18 toe, but I think that the heel piece is really the key here. And I, I like it just being lighter weight, give the ski a little bit more flex in the tail. Yeah. Um, still pretty stiff back there in the tail. It's not like it's, it's not like a crazy difference just putting a pivot on it, but I do like the intuitiveness that I think a pivot adds to a ski's feel. Now you were an inch away from putting like a rocker flex, a rocker yeah, race. Yeah, with like a plate like and a stuff. Pl like a Rossi race system on that thing. Yeah, which would have taken it in a totally different direction. Totally. And would have created more of like a, not a, necessarily a dead spot, but that like super stiff under feel race feel where you can just push against it endlessly and I think this is better for this ski yeah you know like I've got that disruption ti2 and that ski is super stiff and has a race plate on it so that kind of satisfies like anytime I would want to go out and just like ski a GS race ski and have that feel I can take that this I think if I had done that or put any other binding that just doesn't allow for as natural of a flex it would take away that rewarding experience on like that flatter north slope terrain i don't know that i'd be able to generate as much like right fun out of the skis no i feel like there's enough power underfoot for on both of these models that that extra system or plate isn't entirely necessary totally yeah. that's up to that's up to you yeah i don't know it just feels like this matches like the intention of the ski yeah 80 underfoot not a race ski it's like more of an all-mountain ski right. or anything so this just yeah feels really good i think it makes like shorter skidded turns a little more easily with the pivot on it too yeah i would see that too because previously before owning this pair i had only ever skied them with like a demo binding on it so yeah kind of cool to to see the difference there um so yeah what do you think one more run i'll do another I want to do two more. It's pretty nice out here. It's pretty nice. Either way, um, we'll catch about, up with you later. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do another for sure. Yeah, um, I kind of want to take these down like hayride. Okay. Let's see what happens. We'll see you on hayride. One scary turn. So, like the third one. Yeah, yeah, a good airplane turn. Yeah. Bob, that was that was the redemption I was looking for, the redo I was looking for. I think you got your ticket in North Slope with no one on it. That uh, was awesome. That's yeah. That's what you. That's what you really need on these skis. Yeah. At least to truly appreciate what they can do. Really, just letting it run like that. And boy, what what confidence inspiring skis. Yeah, you can just keep going. You can just keep going. Like very right. very little limit in sight. Right. But they're not like jarringly stiff, so it's not scary. No. You know? Yeah, it's the blend of these attributes. Right. It's really impressive. Right. Like on other skis that hit a high level of stability and, and confidence that's made for me, there's also that like scary factor. Right. Where you get going really fast and you're like, I don't even know if I can slow down at this point. Like this is I think I'm just along for the ride now. Where these, they just feel a little bit more forgiving, a yeah. little bit more dynamic. Yeah, totally. Um, you got one more run for you here, Bob? Yeah, I'm excited. Be like more choppy than last time. You yeah. Know, first run smooth, you I think the, by yeah. run four. I think it's, you know, kind of like what we saw with you on North Slope there. It's just like a little bit of changing conditions. Yeah. I'm pretty sure these are going to do just fine. Should do just fine. Yeah. Um, I will say I'm going to put them away before this foot powder 
that we're gonna get. But how are you gonna know how they're gonna perform in a foot of snow if you don't ski them in a foot of snow? You wanna ski them on the powder day too? I'm, no, but. <laughs> <laughs> They'd probably do fine. Yeah. I skied that powder day on the uh, Scott Pure Piece 77 last year and had a blast. Right, not so, too long ago that an 80 would have been the fattest ski on the mountain. No, you can ski powder on these yeah. things, I just don't think I'm going to. Right, now that you have options. I'm going to ski a QST blank. Right, that's a better choice. It's a superior powder ski. Yep. Look at us, <laughs> just really profound ski reviewers. Fat skis are better than powder. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll do one more run with Bob here. Um, let us know if you have any questions about these skis. Uh, we do have the full review of both of them, so probably between this and, and those two reviews, I would guess that that's all the information that you would need, but you never know, and, and we're always happy to answer questions. Yep. So, let us know. Let us know what you think. Maybe you've picked up a pair. Maybe you've skied them already this season. If you have, share a comment, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.